Watch this highlight clip from 2017. It's with the Master Mouse S. There were some build quality issues and the cable wasn't good, plus it even had a 13 gram weight in it, but I felt like I could aim it better than the Zowie FK2. This is how important shape is. Despite all the problems, I still loved using it. Ever since then, I was asking Cooler Master to remake it. The shape deserved another try. I was starting to think we would never see it, but thankfully, they've brought it back. And after listening to community feedback, they've taken it to a level I didn't even expect. Before we get into it, I just want to point out some mouse feet have plastic covers to protect them. They're pretty easy to remove, just use your fingernail very gently. And you should know if they're on there by the feel. If it doesn't glide easily compared to your other mouse, then you should check. I don't see it too often these days, but all copies of this mouse have had them. And the box is really basic, just the mouse and some replacement feet. I actually really like the simplicity. Now, here it is, the Cooler Master MM710. In black and white, and glossy and matte finish. It's a small mouse with a symmetrical shell and buttons on the left only. Super lightweight at 54 grams with a bit of cable, a top optical 3389 sensor, and an amazingly smooth flexible cable. This is a top mouse, clearly, and I think this shape could suit a lot of people. It has the usual curved sides for comfort and grip for picking it up, slight comfort curves in the buttons, but where it's different to most is the back. So from the side, you can see that's where the hump is. The height is about 3.8 centimeters. And from the back, you can see it's fairly flat on top with curves on the sides. Also, the back section is actually about 5.6 centimeters, which feels quite wide. What does this mean? It means it should fill your hand better. And it's a very versatile shape, suiting multiple grip styles. I personally like to have a part of my palm touching the back here, but I think it's a grip. If you claw grip, but also like to rest your palm on the back, this also works really well. And of course palm grip too. My hands are about 18 by 9 centimeters. This mouse is slightly too big for me, because the grip width is about 5.45 centimeters, while the length is about 11.5. Based on the three finger rule and middle finger plus knuckle, I want the grip width to be about 5.3 centimeters and length 10.8. You can check your own and compare them. That's for best aim without going too uncomfortable. Still, this would suit hands up to about 19 centimeters in palm and claw palm grip, maybe up to 20 centimeters in claw grip and fingertip grip. It really depends on what you like. Here it is next to some other mice so you get a general idea of the size too. And now from underneath, and also the side. So we could call this a small mouse, pretty much in the range of the Zowie S2 and Logitech G305. But personally, I actually like this shape better than both of those. And as I said, it's much lighter at 54 grams with a bit of cable. A lot of people are finding that they aim better with lighter mice. So if you have the choice between all three, I would definitely choose this one. In fact, other than the Ultralight 2, this would be my choice. Especially with these new cables. Super light, super soft, super flexible. It makes them feel almost wireless. Even at such a light weight, it barely moves when I push on the cable. And the cable is about 1.88 meters long. So about 6 foot 2 inches. The mouse feet feel quite fast. Although there is some scratching at times, I'm not sure from what. Maybe because the feet don't seem tapered. Or maybe because they're so thin that any pressure you put on the top of the mouse, you could sink it into the pad and actually cause the shell to scratch. That might wear in over time, but so far it hasn't actually been a problem. Not in game anyway, just something I thought I'd mention. Other than that, you have a light mouse, light cable and fast feet. I think this is going to take a while to adjust to. You might want to lower your sensitivity for a week or so, unless you're using a Zowie GSR pad, which has enough control to counter that. All sounds quite good so far, but I want to bring up build quality. We'll start with the button sound check. I used to say I wanted left and right separate from the shell to avoid the shell flexing. Unfortunately, we're now getting a lot of mice with buttons wobbling. This is pretty normal. Only a few companies have worked out how to do it properly. Cooler Master isn't one of them yet. 
so they might do better to go back to the other design for now, but I think this is okay, especially considering how cheap it is. If you get one with this much wobble, that should be fine, but more than this and it affects you in game, then yes, probably best to send it back. I'll leave that up to you. They feel pretty good otherwise, a nice snap to them. No pre-travel, but can feel the wobble, sometimes. And there's post-travel, but that's on a lot of mice too. And the switches are rated for 20 million clicks. The wheel is a bit harder to press in, but I could do it without accidentally scrolling. And there are steps while feeling smooth. I quite like this wheel. It's good in general use and gaming. The side buttons are angled, which isn't great if you press them directly from the side, but if you just tilt your thumb up a bit like this, they're quite good. Not too much travel on them either, it's a decent click. The DPI button is tiny and out of the way, so that's good too. Pretty happy with all of them, but as always, they could be improved. As for latency, they may have the 4 millisecond debound set, because it's basically that much behind the Logitech G903 in the bomb test, and I found it more difficult to get consistent lower scores with it too. It was fine in game, much like Glorious Model O, but I think companies have to figure something out about latency. Now the build. My matte copies appear to creak and crack a little more than my gloss copies. It's not too bad, but I would suggest not pressing too hard on them. When tapping and shaking them, there are rattles on all my copies. The mouse wheel, cable area, lens maybe, who knows. So they could definitely work on this and even increase the price if they fix it. It's not a deal breaker, I'm still happy using them, but for such an outstanding mouse, it is a shame that it doesn't have better construction. I know they worked on it and I know it's hard and it's not that bad, but I have to point these things out in reviews. Again, for such a lightweight mouse at such a low price, I think we can mostly forgive these minor issues. It's just plastic all over, you have the choice of what coating. The matte is slightly textured, and from talking to people, it depends on the climate you're in. I prefer gloss in a slightly humid climate. If you're in a dry cold climate, you might want to go for matte. Glossy black usually shows fingerprints pretty badly, but I didn't see them until I put a bright light on them. So this one's pretty good considering. Matte white might get dirty, I don't know yet. My usual picks would be matte black or gloss white. As for cleaning, usually just a microfiber cloth. And for inside, you can get an air blower like this. They're usually in photography kits. The holes are in the shape of the Cooler Master logo, which are pretty big so they're noticeable, but not too bad. As for software, there's none at this stage, apparently it's coming later. But the DPI settings for now are 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 16000. The sensors are so good these days, they're barely worth talking about. It is the 3389, arguably one of the best, not that anyone would really know the difference, and you can see my testing in the video linked in the description. But as you see in game, tracking is great. Flicks on point. Can't make it lose track. Even trying to tilt slam it, everything is solid. The liftoff distance is under a DVD, and the line test shows it's all good too. I tested on multiple pads to make sure it was fine, and yeah, no problem there. The sensor position is a little toward the back. I've seen some people say it bothers them, although I'm not quite sure why. It's very close to center, even more so than the Master Mass S. To conclude, as I've been saying lately, I love where we're at with gaming mice now. Very lightweight designs, great shapes, amazingly flexible cables, seemingly flawless optical sensors, low latency and lots of features. This is easily one of the best mice ever made, but as always, it comes down to what you like. If you missed out on the Ultralight 2, this would have been my next choice, and it's much cheaper. So this one is definitely worth a look for hands about 19 centimeters. But as there's not much choice for smaller hands, you should definitely look at this one too. And it's just one of those mice that feels good to use. I actually really love using it. Although I don't aim the best with it anymore, it is very comfortable for me. And as I said, if the Ultralight 2 didn't exist, this would be my main. But I do focus on aim when I'm choosing a mouse. So while this does have issues, I would forgive them all because this would still be my best choice. And again, it's really cheap. I think they're listing it at about $50 in the US, but it's only $60 in Australia. That's Australian dollars. For comparison, the Ultralight 2 is about $190. Again, that's Australian. So really cheap mouse, amazing features. If you're on a budget and you're in the market for a smaller mouse, this is a top recommendation. So a shout out to the Cooler Master team that worked on this one. It's not perfect, but it's really impressive and it's great to see. Job well done. And a big thanks to them for sending it out for review. Of course, this video is not sponsored. All thoughts are my own. You can check the description for more information, including ways you can help support the channel. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.
One last thing, I did get a lot of highlights with this mouse, so stick around and watch some more to a tracker called Dominate. Have fun. Come <laughs> on.